Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to another exciting tutorial. This is a, a two-part tutorial series where initially we're going to do this. And then we will continue further on and uh, complete it with, with this sponge effect, sponge tearing effect, okay? Before I proceed any further, shout out goes to a couple of guys. CG Record, this is where I got my inspiration from. The second one is um, Applied Houdini Particles 5. I used a little trick from this tutorial to solve my problem and I have confirmed it with uh, Steve that it's okay for me to show that in my tutorial. So definitely check it out. And the uh, third one is Intagma. This video here, Houdini in five minutes, 13 setup grains. This really helped me out um, how to set up the texture for the grains. Okay, without further ado, let's jump right in. So I'm going to control click Taurus. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to change this to source and go in and change the Y to 0.1 and also going to increase the number of rows to 24 and columns to 48. And then I'm going to create a transform and go to front view by pressing spacebar three. And I think I can move it just by 0.1. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Spacebar one back to perspective view. And now I'm going to get back out and click on vellum and select vellum grains it will create a bunch of uh, nodes for us so if you go into source now <clears throat> you click on select geo uh, it looks like that that's not very good i'm going to change this to 0.4 yeah give it a, a little bit of dense density and uh, i'm gonna enable jitter as well okay Okay, I'm going to go to Autodop Network, press L to lay it out and H to fit it. I'm going to Vellum Solver. I'm going to change the sub steps to 10 and go into Advanced. Go into Grain Collisions and change the traction weight to 1. And um, this is important because whatever we do outside in the source uh, gets multiplied by this number. And if this is 0, then nothing is going to work. So I'm just going to show you what happens with uh, zero. And uh, before I show you, I'm going to create a ground plane. And there it is. That's fine. And then I'm just going to create a uh, camera as well. OK, good. So let me lay it out again. H. All right. And press it. And it just does that. OK. I'm going to change this to one. And you'll see that it's not falling apart like before anymore go back into source and uh, let's create a point bob and we're going to call this class and we're going to jump right in and i'm going to create a voronoi noise and connect the position to position and then seed to cd it turns black but don't worry i'm going to create a random node and connect that here and change the end signature to 3d color there you go i'm going to change the frequency to four because i know that's what worked for me what we want to do is we want to export using a bind export um, seed to input change the parameter to class um, and that'll be integer and now you'll see class like random numbers let's create a um, connect adjacent pieces because without the class this will not work okay and I'm going to change this to adjacent points and nothing's uh, appearing right now if I change search radius to 2 we've got something here and I'm going to bring the uh, max search points to 16 because we don't need this many uh, we're working currently on a low resolution grain size and obviously um, I don't want this max search points to 100 because when we increase the resolution size, this is going to uh, be a lot of primitives in there. So we don't want that. Okay. 
Um, I'm just going to check uh, what's happening here. Just bear with me. Oh, yes. So um, when you insert the uh, bind export, it automatically connects the bound class to position. That's not right. So just connect it to class. And now you should see that color transfer across to this. Okay. So that's looking good. Enable length attribute, which is very important. And now let me save this. And the next one, again, another point VOP. And we're going to call this attraction weight. Okay. And we're going to go in there. And I'm going to create an AA noise, anti alias noise, position to position. And then noise to cd there you go and we're going to do another bind export and we're going to say uh, attraction weight we're exporting attraction weight connect this back on again um, and what i'm going to do before that is because if you look at the attraction weight right now it's 0.2 to okay you know what before that i'm going to change the AA noise and i want the signature uh, the frequency to be four as well for this okay so now you look at this it's uh, negative 0.4 to 0.29 so i'm going to put in a fit range minus 0.4 to 0.3 0.3 okay good so that's what it looks like so that's good i'm going to get out of there we have uh, constraints coming in already here, which is not useful. So we're going to connect the constraints up to here. Okay. Um, when you feed in the geo into the sim here, we don't want this because the sim is expecting to see just grains, not this. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, delete all the primitives from there by using an add node and just delete. Let's run this and see what goes on okay so some parts of it have fell apart and some hasn't okay I didn't want to waste time so I created this uh, tube thingy um, <clears throat> so if, uh, it's basically a tube and um, animated using two transforms and it goes like this okay over 48 frames okay um, I'm just gonna change the number of frames to 120 here okay that looks good and we're going to use that as a static object in the autodoc network and i'm just going to get that now to outpour and check use deforming geometry click on merge and press shift r shift r to change positions and affect a relationship mutual okay that looks good let me play this now for a second all right so that's doing something that's falling apart like that is because nothing is really holding even though we've defined the adjacent points here so we're going to create a primitive wrangle oops primitive wrangle and we're going to connect here and we're going to call this uh, constraints so I'm going to type in s art type equals stitch s at break break type equals stretch stress and then at break threshold equals 2000 uh, 2000 because I know it worked before that's all okay that's all it is so I'm gonna save this now I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this shortly okay but uh, let me see what goes uh, how the uh, simulation behaves now okay simulation behaves uh, pretty much the same way so I'm just gonna check what's going on okay that's because we need to add constraints that's what it is so I'm gonna add a vellum constraints here perfect and I'm gonna leave it at distance along edges okay so let's run this through now I'll uh, be having the same way all right okay and that's because that is connected to that that's why right so let's see if that works yeah so that's better 
Okay, it's uh, behaving somewhat as expected, which is good. It's fine. If you look at here, the shelf tools already created this for us. I'm going to go ahead and go to grains and upres sand. And now this is uprested, and if you go in here, it's created these four for us. I'm going to disable the color. I'm going to bring in my own UV and I'm put in a timesheet after vellum plus process. Delete the uh, frame number so it just stays where it is at. And then I'm going to create a UV texture. UV texture. And then I'm going to um, attribute class, change it to point. It's important. If not, it won't work. And then I'm going to leave it at orthographic. And then I'm going to create a point VOP. Put in here and connect the second input here. And we're going to call this UV. And go inside. I'm going to create a point import uh, import point attribute. I'm going to connect the point uh, number to point number and op input two to file. And then I'm going to create a bind export. I'm going to export UV and change the type to three floats vector because UV is. And I'm going to connect the result to input. But in import point, you need to change the attribute to UV. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, good. Now I'm going to create a an attribute from map node. Oops, attribute from map node, and I'm going to select uh, my little UV thing. Okay, so that there it is. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this one, and I'm going to see how that goes. All right, good. Okay, so I'm going to go back to camera. And uh, I'm just going to change the camera to that looks okay, but the object is not there, and it's obviously because. The grains vellum, we need to go into redshift object and enable render object as particles. Now it shows up, that's fine. Um, but there's you know there's no colors or anything. So let's go into material and create a an RS material builder. We'll call this particles and we will assign this to vellum grains and go into there and i'm going to create point rs point attribute i'm going to call the attribute name a cd and i'm going to create a an rs material connect the color to diffuse color and the out color to surface okay and now if i render this Yep, there you go. That's where it is. Okay, good. I'm just going to increase the intensity a little bit because it looks too dark for me. Um, okay, I think uh, that's all right, but I'm just going to change the position. Okay, that looks decent. Okay, good. So that looks okay, but it's not as good as it can be. Um, so if I go into source again and um, increase this. Um, increase the resolution to 25 for example okay so uh, I just played this through now and if you see that it's, it's flying away um, let's see how we can fix that go back into source and go into vellum constraints where you can enable com compression stiffness stiffness drop off uh, not output group enable plasticity so what worked for me was compression stiffness that uh, it's one 10 million uh, stiffness drop off is the same there you go and the threshold I'm gonna increase it to hundred thousand okay now let's check it out
Okay, it's uh, not as bad, I think, um, but I just forgot one more thing. I want to go into this uh, ground plane, and I'm going to kill the bounce, bounce forward, and increase the friction to 10, okay? Because that'll certainly help. And also the same with this one. No bounce, uh, and the friction is 10. All right. Okay, so I got the result now, and... There you go. Yeah, it slides away, but it's a much better result than uh, before because earlier it was flying. So I'm going to render this and I'm going to show you the final result shortly. Okay, so it's done 50 frames. Um, I think we got enough. So you get the idea. There it is. Um, I said final result, but it's really not. It's the intermediate result. So final result will be in the next chapter or, or next part. Okay, um, so there it is. All right, see you uh, in part two.